Well, we're back, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Garrett Thompson, and this is episode 17 of the Dorm Room Sports Podcast, and it's season two. This is the first podcast I've made since April where I'm actually in a dorm room. I'm in the new dorm room for the new year, and it's going to be a big year. I'm super excited, and we've got a lot to cover. Well, not a lot to cover, but we've got a lot of good, and we've got a lot of interesting points to cover. So I'm going to get right into it. First of all, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Mitch Marner has signed a six-year deal. Six years at $10.893 million per. So six years, $10.893 million per year. That is perfect. I'm happy about this. One of my biggest reasons was, and I talked about this, I talked, I talked about this over the summer, was the only way I'd want him to sign a big contract is if it was on a long, if it was like over a long period of time. Now, when I said like I posted a photo, I posted a photo of Martin and I made a little point, and one of the biggest things was people said that he was worth a lot of money, and like I came back and I was like, I absolutely agree. He's definitely worth a lot of money. I never, I wasn't saying that he wasn't. I was just saying. If I was Dubis, I would pay him long term. I'd pay him good money for long term, not short term, because there was a big rumor where it'd be a bridge deal at 10 million. It would be around this number, but for three years, not six. And that would be one of the biggest, one of the most expensive bridge deals in NHL history. And I don't think any party would have been would have properly agreed with that after a while. And I don't think that it would have it should have been the way to go. And they didn't, and now he's signed for six years. So now they've locked up the whole three-headed monster of Nylander, Matthews, Marner, and they also have Kappen and they locked up this summer as well as Janssen. So we've got a good, we've got our our fast defensive, our fast offensive core as a part of our team now. And now we have also Tyson Berry, who we locked in, Alex Kerfoot, which will be perfect on the third line. We have Jason Spezza, who signed for a year at 750K minimum which is an interesting contract. I think that'll be a year. Everyone says that he'd, he'd retire after this year. I'd like to see him come back again, just depending on how this year goes, obviously. Um, I just watched, now I recorded a podcast that was supposed to be episode 17. I didn't like my points that I made, so I'm remaking it. This is what it's gonna be. I just watched the preseason game in Newfoundland, Ottawa, Toronto, split squad. It was the first half of the split squad. Austin won't be playing in either one of these games. He didn't play tonight in Newfoundland. Toronto was at home. And then um, tomorrow night, they'll be playing in Ottawa against the Sens at home, obviously, in the nation's capital. Tonight, it was a split squad. We saw Barry, we saw Kapanen, we saw Marner, we saw a good chunk of that squad and we saw Freddie in net too, my boy. Um, and the Leafs lost three, one to Ottawa. Yes. Ottawa, um, Ottawa. Uh, now despite the numerous amount of bashing I've made against that team, uh, and the fact that they have DJ Smith as their head coach and DJ Smith, absolutely like we had a great power play and then people figured it out. And then our power play, kind of went down because it was one of the best in the league and then people figured out that Marner was going to pass to Matthews every time and then they're like oh maybe we should cover one of the best uh forwards in the league passed to by one of the best wingers in the league maybe we should we, we should cover that up that obviously the Leafs still managed to make some great passes and score some great goals in the power play the rest of the year but that was our setup and then teams it took teams way longer than I thought to figure it out but they did and like it was like DJ Smith didn't really change it up as much as I think he should have. And that kind of ticked everybody off, especially in the playoffs when the power play could get absolutely nothing done against the Boston Bruins penalty kill. We did get him done a few times, but not as much as we should have. And I was happy to see DJ Smith leave. And I think we'll be able to get a couple of new power play options going this year. Hopefully we can, because we have the pieces, we have the players to make the power play great. Let's just, let's get her done. Now, other massive news in the world of signing of the RFAs most like recently within the past couple of days Brock Besser signed to a, a bridge deal of three years 5.875 million per which is 
fifth that's that's still at 17 million dollars 17 million dollars for three years that's big for him that's a very very team friendly contract uh signed by him that's going to be a big deal i think after those three years he'll they'll sign him long term they'll want to sign him long term and i believe they will charlie mcavoy as well of the boston bruins of the boston bruins signed a three-year 4.9 million dollar contract now that was also that was also a very team friendly deal. These are all big bridge deals. I think it was one of those things where like RFAs were getting into such a big such a big issue. And I think that the fact that a lot of the RFAs signed to bridge deals is good because they'll be able to they'll obviously be able to play and teams will be able to have a bit more time to figure out their cap. Um, they'll have three years to figure out their cap before they say, Hey, look, let's get this thing done. We'll sign you to long term. Another Boston Bruin signed for two years, 2.85 million per, and that is Brandon Carlo, defenseman Brandon Carlo. That's also a very big pickup uh, for Boston. That's a big signing, sorry, for Boston. That was a bridge deal as well. The only RFA bridge deal that I haven't seen so far is obviously Marner, as he signed six years, right? So I think that the bridge deals are gonna are a good way to just solve the problem for now. The other RFAs who haven't signed yet, Matthew Kachuk, he's not going to go anywhere. He's not going to be like Lion A or Ranton and Miko Ranton, who had an absolutely disgusting season last year. As we all know, he absolutely ran the Colorado offense with help of obviously Nathan McKinnon and Gabriel Landeskog. Not saying that they had bad seasons at all. It's just Miko Ranton and had his coming out season and they haven't signed him. You, you have a guy who played as well as Ranton and did and you haven't signed him yet. I wake up like he's he's an incredibly good hockey player now he's practicing with sc burn along with lion a in the swiss league lion a's thinking about staying winnipeg hasn't signed him yet how have you not signed your number two overall pick who is the number one overall pick number 34 um like <clears throat> i don't know why they haven't signed him yet it makes no sense you have that you have the opportunity to do it you haven't signed kyle connor yet either <clears throat> Kyle Connor is no slouch offensively. He's no slouch as an overall player. Neither is Lyonet, as we all know. Why has they haven't signed two of their big guys? I'd sign Lyonet over Kyle Connor, but Kyle Connor is still would still not be low on my list. You have Miko Rantanen in Colorado. You just got Nazem Kadri. Despite Nazem Kadri being an issue in the playoffs, Kadri's not a bad player at all. He's ridiculous. His hands are softer than a Casper mattress. When he wants them to be, why hasn't he signed yet? Why hasn't why haven't they signed Rantanen? Do you know how big that would be to sign him and have that whole team back to get have that whole three-headed monster back together, and then have Kadri backing them all up and bringing all the other guys back up into speed? That's a big deal. But no, Rantanen is now going to be going to be practicing with SC Burn. He's gone. I think he's already over there, and Lion is already there practicing with them. These the Lion Ace, I there's rumors that Lion Ace thinking of staying, and Randon and him are good friends, both good Finnish players. He's gonna they're thinking about staying. This didn't have to happen. You could have signed them. You should have signed them. You still can. Why haven't Why haven't they signed yet? It doesn't make any sense to me. You have to sign them. It's it's this year. There's gonna be like you're you need them. They're the big part. They're one of the big reasons why for each team, fans are coming to the game. They're the reason why a lot of these teams won games last year. It's a big reason. Lionel didn't ha had a quieter year, but it's Lionel. He can definitely come back. I don't know why he hasn't signed yet. I don't know why they haven't signed him. I really don't. It makes no sense to me why they haven't signed him yet. I want them to sign him. I want them to sign him so badly because, like, it's, it's just stupid why they haven't. And the RFA situation this summer has just been ridiculous like i don't know why they haven't signed all these guys yet it's i get it maybe there's something going on with numbers and stuff like that and obviously you have your cap and it's not like other teams uh, not like other um leagues where they can have soft caps or whatever it's the nhl the nhl has a hard cap and you can't go over it you have to stick within and if you do go over it you have to pay some serious royalties and i don't think any team wants to do that but at the same time you have to really work with your numbers because you really should be signing these guys a hundred percent. Now, we're going to talk about something that isn't RFA because I know all over hockey news it's all been RFAs and RFAs and signing and signing and signing. I'm going to talk about now on this date, 
we're going to talk about like September preseason. We're going to talk about who I think is going to be good this year, who I th- like, who I think is going to be garbage this year, and I who I think is going to have turnaround seasons this year. Now the team. Now here's the thing. Here are the th- here's the teams I think that will be bottom of the league fighting for the first overall pick: the Anaheim Ducks, the Columbus Blue Jackets, and the Detroit Red Wings. Now the Detroit Red Wings have Philip Zadina, and they have a lot of decent. They have good prospects. They're going to be one of those teams that will be good in two years. Same thing with Ottawa. Ottawa, if they're smarter than that, they'll probably be better next year. Maybe they'll do well this year. You never know. I don't see them being in the bottom three like they were last year. I don't see that at all. But I don't see them. I don't see Ottawa making the playoffs this year. I see them doing well in the next coming in the coming years. I don't see them doing well this year, though. But the teams who I think are going to do badly are obviously Anaheim. Anaheim's in a massive rebuild. They don't have Patrick Eves or Ryan Kessler this year. I, I, despite what people may may like or not like about Ryan Kessler, he's a big part of their team. He's been a veteran there for a while. He's he's a leader in the room, and he's out for the whole season. Same thing with Patrick Eves. Now, Detroit, you have good picks. You're going to be a good team in a couple of years. Jimmy Howard's one of the only reasons why your team's staying relevant. You've lost a lot of your top guys. You've lost Cronwall. You've lost Zetterberg. You've lost all these guys. You've lost all of your key players. You Like... It's one of those things where I think Detroit's going to be at the bottom of the league for a bit, and then eventually their player they're going to start bringing in all their rookies. Their rookies are going to start to click, and they'll have a good, they'll have a good kind of, they'll have a good setup. Now the Columbus Blue Jackets, I know that they made it to the second round of the playoffs last year, but a lot of the main reason why you made it to the playoffs last year is gone. Jonas Corposalo is going to be your starting goaltender. That is 100%. You don't have anybody else. It's going to be Jonas Corposalo as your starter. Now, I think that you still obviously have all of your top guys. You have Zach Wierenski. You have, like, all your main... You have all, like, you still have some good... You still have good players. You do. You still have, like, Dubinsky and all those guys and, like... Atkinson and all those kind of players. You still have good guys. Like you still have like Nick Felino and it, it's it's and Seth Jones as well. I couldn't think of his name for some reason. I don't know why he's one of their best players. He's one of their best defense. They're one of their best defensemen and one of their best players overall. I just I don't know if you'd be at the bottom of the league, but you're not going to do as well. You're not going to do as well as he did. I don't know if they'd make the playoffs. Yeah, you can have good guys, but good guys don't make a team. It has to be the whole team effort, and I don't think that's where they're at. I could be completely wrong, and they could do great, and they could make the playoffs again. Absolutely. I could be absolutely wrong. But as of now, I don't see them making the playoffs. I don't see them being at the bottom of the league, but I don't see them making the playoffs either. Now, the teams the teams who I think are going to have a stronger season are the Arizona Coyotes, for sure, and the Devils, 100%. Because you have a first overall pick in New Jersey. You have P.K. Subban. P.K. Subban, one of the biggest free agent pickups in the whole, like, on the market. All was, that was on the market for sure. You got Wayne Simmons as well, who's going to be an absolute force. And he's going to be able to defend a lot of your players. Obviously, you have, like, Miles Wood, who can also defend guys. But Wayne Simmons is a solid. And he's also really good in front of the net. And he's a strong player who'll be great on the power play. That's what they used him in Philadelphia for. And I think that's going to be a big pickup. That's going to be a big adding for them. Now for Arizona, obviously, they're going to be playing off of their momentum from last year. They're going to see, okay, look, we can play with these guys. We can absolutely play with these guys. And I think that it's going, to be a, it's going to be a strong year for them, 100%. You have Phil Kessel as well. You just picked up Phil Kessel. You traded away Alex Gauchenyuk, who is already playing terrible for your team. He's going to go play for Pittsburgh. And on it, like Pittsburgh, if, he doesn't have a re, if Alex Gauchenyuk doesn't have a revitalization year, that's going to be a brutal trade. They're going to be regretting it. Obviously, there's rumors that if Kessel didn't get traded, Malkin would have wanted to get traded, would have wanted to get traded out of Pittsburgh, which I know Pittsburgh wouldn't have wanted to do because it's Geno and it's Crosby and they've been together since 2007, right? So they're not going to want to get that traded away. Kessel, uh, Geno's been there the whole his whole career and he's been absolutely disgusting. He's hoisted the cup three times, one and twice in back to back years. He like it's just it's. 
it was one of those things where I think they would they should have picked Malkin over Castle, and they did, and I would have too. Now, Phil Castle going to a team like Arizona with Clayton Keller and Auntie Ron to coming back, and he's already he's been a solid goaltender for them. He has. Don't think like you're on Arizona and you can have as good a numbers as you want, but people are still going to look at you in negative because it's because it's Arizona. But along with like Darcy Kemper, who had a great season last year, Darcy Kemper had a great end of the year, especially, and they pushed it. They were one game away from making the playoffs. We don't talk about this now. We are, they were one game away from making the show. They really were. And I think that if they're smart, they will play with that momentum. And this year, they're definitely going to have a better year. And I would not be shocked if they made the wild card. I wouldn't be shocked if they made the playoffs, if they play their cards right. Obviously, it's still the preseason, and I'm making my guesses for the year. But I definitely think that Arizona is going to have one of their best years in a very long time, probably since they last made the playoffs in 2013. Now, I'm going to get a little business out of the way, first of all. Um, I have like I have big plans for this season. Um, I'm going to be starting a fantasy hockey league under the DRS name, so it's going to be the DRSHL. This is our poster. Um, I'm going to be posting it up around like the residents, and I'm if anybody else wants to figure it out, uh, if anyone else wants to join in, I'm going to post it on my Insta- on the Instagram page for the podcast, and. From there, hopefully I'll get a couple people in. I think it's a 20 max. I'm going to try to fix it. If not, it'll be a 20 max email. The email will be on the poster, and it'll be your first name, your last name, and your email in. And I'll add you to the group, and it'll be it'll be fun. I'm excited. As well, this year I want to be able to get some guests on the podcast, whether it be phone interviews or in person. I want to be able to get some stuff done there. I, I have a lot of big hopes for this year, and I hope that and I'm excited for everybody to see it. I'm excited to be making videos constantly again. It was a it was a long summer. I was busy. I got a couple of videos in, and they were fun to get in. Fun to get my buddy Justin into it too. That was a lot of fun as well, having the banter back and forth. I know a lot of people liked it. Um, I think it's going to be a good. It's, I think it's going to be a good solid season. I'm excited for the podcast to be consistent. I'm excited for the fantasy hockey league once that starts going. I'm excited for the possibilities that we have this year, and I'm excited for you guys to be on the ride with me. So, thank you very much. Click a like if you liked it. Click subscribe as well, and I will see you guys very soon. Thank you very much.